Now, as we have already taken a look with the group functions, in this video we are going to cover the group by clause. Because so far when we applied the group functions, as I said earlier, they were considering the complete table as a single group. But if I want to divide the table into smaller logical groups, I can use this group by clause. For example, as we are working in an employees table and I want to split the table or I should say divide the table logically as per the department. For example, I want to see the total salary paid on each department. So such things can be performed here by using the group by clause. So, so far when we were putting the group functions, they were returning me a single result. But now when the smaller groups are formed, they will return a single record for each group. So on the basis of how many groups we are, we will be getting the output. Now, when we have the number of groups here in the output, and if I want to filter, for example, I want to take only those departments where total salary is more than 1 lakh or 1.5 lakhs. So such scenarios can be performed by using the having clause as having clause will be used to filter the groups rather than rows. So be sure about the difference between the where and having because in both the ways we will be applying the constitutions. So here in having we are going to filter the groups while in where clause we filter the rows. So let's see practically about this group by and having clause. So now let's uh, proceed after this example as here I said like group function will consider the complete table as a single group but we can also break a table in the smaller sections. How we should analyze that first. Like here in this particular table employees if I monitor we have a particular column called departments where you can categorize some of the employees. For example, there should be some number of employees working in 20, 10, 40, 30 and in such departments. So what I can do, I can actually break the complete table data into the smaller parts as per the department IDs. So as soon as I will do that by putting a group by clause right here. Now you can observe here like all the departments have been classified like all the data is being classified as per the department. So let's add the department in this select statement also so that the output will be more clear. And now you can see like department 10 sum is that for the 20, 30, 40, 50 and for each department you can observe like the sum, maximum, minimum and the average is different. So this is how the group by clause can help us in dividing the complete group into the smaller parts. Let's analyze another example here. So here I'm just taking a single one, single function like sum and let's alias that a total salary. All right, so it is per department total salary right here. Now, if you'll see the total will be like the same which we have entered, which we have calculated even before this group by. But the thing to analyze is unless and until you will group the data on the particular column basis, you are not allowed to pass the column name right here. For example, if I'm not grouping this query on the basis of department, it is actually illogical to select the department name or department ID. Why? Because the query is meant for grouping data. And if you are asking for the individual department ID or name, that will be illogical. So I have passed here the department also in the group by so that first of all, the grouping will be made on the basis of department, like all the common data, all the common department will be having a, a single group. And then I will do a summing of all the salaries in that particular department's employees. If you want to put the department name rather than department ID, you can make a join anytime as we have done earlier. Make sure in the group by you are not passing the department ID, but you have to pass department name because you would be selecting the department name right here. So make sure you, apart from these group functions, whichever column you are passing here, 
you must pass that in the group by as well and be very sure about like all the grouping which you are doing that should be done through a logical column for example it is not logical to group all the employees on the basis of their first name or the employee id because obviously it will create the group of one employee only all right so be very sure and analyze the structure of your table before getting started with this group by now let's add one more scenario right here if i want to filter a group if i am not specifying any group by and only working with the group function surely i am going to get a single record so no filtering is required if there is no group by but if i have divided the groups into smaller parts by using a group by as i have done here so basically i will not call this one a record but i will call it a group because this is a group of all the employees of department 20 30 40 and so on so what i want is i want to get only those department details here whose total salary is more than 1 lakh so for filtering the records we have something called a where clause but here we will work with the having clause so for having clause what i'll have to do is having some salary is greater than 1 lakh so as soon as i'll do that you can see only those departments are here now whose salary is greater than 1 lakh as in the previous example of group functions we have discussed like we cannot pass the group functions in the where clause so make sure you are not doing it again here so that's why for passing this group function i use this having clause and similarly if you want to filter the rows before putting them in a group you can obviously add the where clause right here so this is how you can start working with the group by and having clauses here in the group functions